the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results, according to Albert Einstein. And that's the path we've taken in regards to STEM education, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. We overwhelmingly continue to hire and graduate individuals from represented groups with the same demographic background. Although we made some headway in the field, it's still a field that's dominated by white males. For our underrepresented students, the problem starts with a lack of exposure to STEM opportunities, continues on with an underpreparation for college-level STEM courses, and then ends with a sense of isolation within the field. Our system provides some students with limited laboratory supplies, out-of-date computers, uninspiring curriculum and teaching, and then tracks them into courses that won't prepare them for the field ahead. Our underrepresented students experience an educational deficit in comparison to their privileged counterparts. So I had a college friend named James. James had a, a wonderful understanding of computers. He taught me about Napster, he taught me how to write computer code, and he had a love and excitement for computers that he planned to one day use to change the world. Unfortunately, James dropped out of college. He attended a high school that had limited AP and dual enrollment courses. He often recounted that the only experiments that he performed were reading through his textbook. I, on the other hand, attended an elementary school that allowed me to explore my love for mathematics beyond the pace of the curriculum. In middle school, I had a science teacher that had a PhD in his field of studies and a full lab where we often conducted experiments like measuring the calories in a peanut based off of the change of temperature it produced in a half cup of water. In high school, I took AP calculus, physics, and biology. Not all in the same year. <laughs> James was a first-generation college student from a socioeconomically challenged background. College was a shock to him. His first semester was his first time visiting a university and his first time experiencing that level of rigor. He had no clue what to expect, what was expected of him, how to study, or even why he was taking these classes. And when the university asked him to leave, he was devastated. I, on the other hand, had the opportunity to visit our university three times before enrolling for classes. Our vice principal took me on a college tour. My father, a fellow alum, often told me stories of his college days from as early as I could remember. I had a well-tread path to follow. And if students make it through their STEM degrees that we've underprepared them for in this strange environment, they then go on to not be hired by the tech companies, engineering firms, and research labs. We as a society continue to underfund, undereducate, underprepare, and alienate our underrepresented students. And unfortunately, this disproportionately includes women, students of color, first generation students, and socioeconomically challenged students. It's insanity that we ask our students to perform the same way as those who had more opportunities to prepare for the path ahead without the support needed to make up the educational deficit. Okay, so now that I've depressed you, <laughs> how do we solve this problem? The answer lies in our approach to team science. Team science is the future and the core of scientific advancement. It's a cross-section of disciplines working together to maximize the efficiency and the effectiveness of their research. It thrives from having a diversity of thought from various perspectives working together to solve a problem. But just imagine if we added an extra layer to that, where we include individuals from different cultures, socioeconomic backgrounds, as well as individuals from different levels of preparation. This increase in variation of perspective will result in an increase in the diversity of ideas and ultimately a better product. To do this, we need to encourage our students that we need them. Their perspective is needed. Their experiences have value. We need to let them know that I know the potential that lies within all of them, the desire they have to change the world, the unrealized capabilities that often go untapped with inside them. It's insanity that we continue to hire and graduate the same type of students with the same training 
and the same background and experiences and expecting different results. But it starts at the top with really thinking about who we hire on a team to ensure that all the STEM professionals included have a diverse perspective and then letting each level know how they're needed. STEM professionals need to let college students know about the culture shock they will experience because we need them in the field. College students need to let high school students know about the level of rigor they will encounter because we need more STEM graduates. High school students need to let middle school students know that they need to start with their eyes focused on the prize because we need their fresh perspective. When we open our minds to the value that lies within our students, we get individuals like Sheldon. Sheldon was the only African-American in his biomedical science program at the time, and he struggled through his degree. But he went on and graduated and got his PhD. And he now leads a research team that is developing a vaccine that will one day eradicate Ebola. We must convey the message to our students that we know your perspective is different from what you see around you. But it's OK, because it matters. We need your perspective to survive. Just imagine what it can do. Thank you.